Welcome to New Delhi, the heart of India. Good morning from New Delhi. So we've been here for a week, but we haven't done any sightseeing whatsoever. However, today we're starting a 13 day tour of Northern India. It's led by my friend D Deepak, who is a local guide here. Most of the people I think are from England and Germany on the tour, and this is a backpacking tour. So the last time I was in India five years ago, it was with the Maharaja Express, a very luxurious kind of trip. And this one is going to be the opposite, but we're gonna see a lot of really great things in Northern India. I cannot wait. Last night to kick things off, we went to a Sikh temple, learned all about the religion, really fascinating. It is the youngest religion in the world, but also the fifth largest. And then also um, in the places of worship, they actually have this program where you can, anyone can go eat. So it doesn't matter what religion, if you're a tourist, if you're local, you can actually go eat and meet the, a meal there. And so we checked that out. Really fascinating and beautiful place. This morning we're going to a Hindu temple. I've heard that it's pretty strict and you can't even bring your phone inside. So I might not have any footage from there, but then we're going on a walking tour, and so I will definitely take you along. Because it's a tour, I don't really know what we're doing today, so we're just gonna kinda take it as it goes. Taking the metro to the temple, it's really close. I had no idea. You do need to have a token. Thankfully, they've given us one, so we don't have to figure that out. little coins to get on the subway you tap it to get in and then to get out you have to actually insert it I didn't even bother to bring my drone here because of the rules it's very complicated I think every time you have to fly it you need permission and it takes a long time it just wasn't worth it plus a lot of the color and the action in India is on the ground anyway so the smog's in the air I don't know how much you'll be able to see from there with a drone but the line here is really long. I think we got here a bit late and it is not even 10 yet. This Hindu temple was built in 2005, but it is so grand and with such intricate detail, you would think it's centuries old. You are not allowed to bring anything inside. No cameras, no phones. So that means no videos, no photos. But it is so amazing, it's still worth visiting. That was beautiful. It's hard to believe that they built a structure like that in 2005 because it looks like it was built 205 years ago or 2005 years ago. It's really beautiful. I think it's good to go with a guide to get an idea of all of the symbolism because there's a lot of it. There are signs in English, but if you don't know the basics of Hinduism, it's hard. The other thing, you definitely need to bring a hat. I have a visor with me because it's so hot. And then also, I would recommend you can bring water inside, but it has to be in a clear bottle. So even if you have to pick up a plastic bottle of water, do it. Because it's very hot today and very smoggy. But I guess that's Delhi. outside so I'm so thankful we're having lunch somewhere cool air-conditioned nice we're at Haldirams which is uh, an Indian company that's been around since 1937 they're actually a sweets and snacks company and they have retail stores all over India but they also have this restaurant that's not a five-minute walk away from the temple which is fantastic uh, they have a lot of food that's from all over India and in a style that I've seen in a number of different restaurants in our week here what you do is you actually go and you order your food, you pay for it, you get a ticket, and then you go up to the counter to get the food. Now, Haldirams is known for sweets, and so also when you leave, there's a whole sweets counter, so maybe you might try to get something there as well. But it's a big company, I hope it's got fantastic food, and interestingly, Wikipedia says that in 2008, the owner was convicted of murdering a tea seller. I want to find more information about that. I'm guessing he's no longer the owner of the company because it's doing quite well. This place is packed. All right. Paper straw, all paper. Kudos to them for that. So this is just, I think, like a little lime mint drink. 
And so next up is the masala dosa. So dosa is just fermented batter, it's black lentils and rice, and then it has this kind of um, center, and it's usually like a potato, curry, pea, sometimes cauliflower. It's a South Indian dish, but everybody kind of does it differently. And then it also comes with coconut chutney. The last time I had this, I thought for some reason it was milk. And then I believe this is a tomato chutney, and then just a little bit of sauce here. That is mm, not too spicy at all. I was thinking this was going to be spicy, but I think this will be the spicy. Not spicy. I know the coconut's not spicy. I would say here, the level is definitely mild to medium spiciness on this dosa. Next up, we're now heading to Old Delhi. I've been here before and it was actually one of my favorite experiences. You can still see the old architecture here and so right here this balcony, the balconies exist for people who are not allowed to go outside but they built the balcony so at least they could go out and look down below to see what was going on. So to this day this area is also known to be one of the best places to get stationary. So it's very chaotic and crazy, but everyone comes here to get wedding invitations and other things. It's the best place to go. So in the summer, Delhi can reach temperatures of 40 or 60 degrees. And so when you come to Old Delhi, all of the houses are built really close together. And that builds these cool alleyways that you don't see on the main streets. The main streets, even right now, since summer just started, so hot. But here, there's a breeze that's very cool. Perhaps the most famous dessert, the most famous sweet here, is the Jalebi Wala. I've had this before. And it's like a very sweet crispy deliciousness but you get a lot of it and it's very sweet so i would say get the smallest size and share rich too it's good but it's basically deep fried sweetness mm. so that was a very quick walk of old delhi just a taste of it for today when I come back before I fly out, I'm hoping to do an Old Delhi food tour with Dee. Again, I did it five years ago, it was amazing. So I will get that for you on camera because there are so many cool things to see and it really deserves its own video. Another security point. So in India, the security points, men and women are separated, uh, which is probably a good thing because at that temple, I actually had to be patted down because of my underwire in my bra. Oh, it's time for coffee. It's 2.30 p.m. We've been going all day. Everyone in the group is from Germany or England, and so their strides are really long. They're very tall people. I'm five feet, and so I'm like trying to like shuffle along. I'm always at the end. Uh, but I think also part of that is because for the last four days we have walked at least 20k in Delhi. We didn't take a tuk-tuk until last night and that's because I was exhausted. I was done. And so today I think I'm still feeling it a little bit. But the nice thing about this tour is that you have a lot of free time. You have a lot of optional activities. So if you're a backpacker and like you don't want to do food or you don't want to do something else, like you can opt in and out of a lot of different things, which I really like. because. I wanted to take this tour just to get acquainted with traveling independently, like how do I take the trains and the subway and you know, in general, how do things work? How can I um, learn things about doing it like a local? Because India can be overwhelming, so this has been good, but yeah, I'm tired. I'm at Blue Tokai in Khan Market, so we're in Khan Market for two and a half hours. I think we're just going to stay here. We love this coffee shop. We've been here, I think, three or four times in the last week and it has fabulously strong iced coffee. It's so, so good. They also make specialty Indian coffees that I really want to try, and thankfully, Blue Tokai is available all over India, or at least I know it's here and it's in Mumbai and some other places. I think it's expanding quite a bit, um, so I do want to try the specialty coffees there. And the Wi-Fi here is faster than Canada. This place is fantastic. But yeah, we're just gonna hang out on this patio, which is shaded, 
put our feet up and drink some coffee. Mm. All right, now it's time. We are heading to Varanasi for a night train. So the reason why we stayed in this neighborhood was because it's close to the train station. So we're just gonna walk over. This will be my first time taking an Indian train. So it's gonna be an adventure in itself. So the train system here is pretty crazy. In India, it is the best, the number one way people travel. But because of that, especially during this time of year, you have to book train tickets six months in advance. Flying with a low-cost airline, it does not cost a lot more. And so actually on our trip, they booked a lot of the tickets before they even knew who we were. So my name is not Angelina. For this trip, my name is Alex. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.